Now, as we told you before the break, Tom is out at the Ozark Empire Fair. And that's where we're going right now. What's going on, Tom? <laughs> What's going on? Well, <laughs> I'm almost in an entire suit of armor is what's going on because this is something you can see at the fair, you can learn, you can experience. I have Sir Theodore with me and he is with Knights of Valor. Sir Theodore, fa thank you first of all for having us out here. Oh, no problem, no problem. Now, in your show, mm. so much of it is, is about education. And yes. one of the first things I know people want to go is, what is a knight? Well, I mean, again, there's a lot of the fantasy ideals of what a knight is, you know, protectors of kings and princesses, you know, rescuers of damsels in distress. But that's all not very historical. Uh -huh. Historically, sometimes they were the guy who stole the princess in the first place or is there to actually come and try to kill the king and take over. So knights, they weren't necessarily uh, good guys all the time, depending on your point of view. Were they almost mercenaries in some way? Uh, a lot did become that way because, okay. again, it was it was all about making money for them back then. Mm -hmm. um, but they did have their codes of honor. They did follow certain rules. But mainly they were warriors, yes. right? They were soldiers. Uh, now, the biggest difference is, and you can look it up in the dictionary, a knight is a mounted man-at-arms. Yes. So a man-at-arms, a very specific type of soldier that can use multiple different weapons. And then, of course, mounted means that they're on a horse and can also use that horse. Tell, as a tell us about some of these weapons here because this is nasty warfare. Oh, yes. I mean, they didn't uh, pull any punches back then. So, I mean, there are a variety of weapons, a lot of swords. Knights did use swords quite a bit, and they became known in a lot of ways as something that a knight or nobleman would use, mm -hmm. mostly because they're expensive to make. Right. Hard to train somebody, like it takes a little while to use it properly. So you didn't want to give that to your common foot soldier. It would just take way too much money, time, and effort. Right. So you gave them more simpler weapons, and of course then you conscripted uh, peasants, I mean, they'd have some of their own weapons that would just be things that you'd look like they came from Home Depot, right? Like yeah. hammers and axes. Yeah, exactly. But later on became a little more modified to have extra pieces that were more mm -hmm. brutal for warfare. Now, the, the armor that I have on, for instance. Yes. How protective is this? Because I feel like I'm lugging around 100 pounds here, and I don't have a full suit on. Well, it's yeah, you're in almost 165. You're wearing my tournament kit. Okay. Um, so this is what we call a tournament suit of jousting armor. A uh, little heavier than you would find in actual battle and combat. They would have been a little more streamlined for that. But this would be what we call a plate mill. Very protective because again, solid plates, you can't really stab through it, right. hit it with a hard, with a mace or something hard. It will dent a little bit, but it'll take a while for you to actually get through, except for you know, in the soft points of the shoulder, right. in the eye slits of the helmet, things yeah. like that, where you gotta bend as well, right? I mean, it amazes me because I'm, I, the picture I have of you know, these knights on horseback, they're the earliest version of a tank. Exactly. And yet, they had to be mobile enough to be able to sling these swords and different things around. Exactly. So this is uh, not easy. Uh, well, you got to remember though too, they were in a sense like in the later years, the athletes of the era, but they were also the elite soldiers, right? They became those True. elite soldiers. So all they really did was eat, sleep, and train for warfare and then go fight. One part of warfare, of course, is the siege. Yes. And we have a weapon over here. Why don't we walk over this way and talk to me a little bit about what we're about to see and do. So what we're gonna go over to is the siege weapon that we have. Now, throughout history, there were a lot of different siege weapons. Of course, they started off early with very basic things like battering rams, evolving into siege towers and right. ballista, which are like a big giant crossbow. And then eventually they came to the ultimate thing they could come up with, a, ma a marvel of what we call medieval science. It's the trebuchet, which trebuchet. is that device right there. Look at that. Developed in the late Middle Ages. All right, and now you're gonna actually let me fire this thing, am I right? Yes, we are. So we're gonna get you around over to it. Yes. Now, the trebuchet, again, changed that siege warfare because they added that math and science by getting rid of the, uh, the basket that the catapult used to have. Uh -huh. Instead, they attached a rope with a pouch on it. So you stuck the pouch in, or the projectile in the pouch. Right. And then because that rope will swing out, it creates a, a, an extra force to make it go harder. 
So, so this is one of the great reasons why kids need to stay in school and learn math. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> you know math, you can figure this thing out. You can build so, your own trebuchet. We're going to fire a watermelon because right. it's fun to watch it okay. splat. Yeah, I think it will be. So you got the long rope, that's for safety, so we want to stay a little bit of a distance away so it doesn't hit us at all. All right. All right, but whenever you're ready, just give her a pull. Here we go. Three, two, one, pull. Whoa! <laughs> well, that was interesting. <laughs> and modern technology so that's, fights against medieval. <laughs> that's the trebuchet. That is the trebuchet. My goodness. Now, <laughs> when, are, when are you doing your shows here? So our shows, uh, Monday through Friday, is 5 and 8 o'clock. Saturday will be 2, 5 and 8. Okay. Now, when we come back, we're going to show you another aspect of the things you can see and learn about with the Knights of Valor. So, back to you guys. All right, Tom, I, he didn't get my memo to keep you away from all the weapons. Like, I'm really nervous right now. They're, they're, they're trained for idiots like me being around weapons. <laughs> they know what to do. You said it. Not me. <laughs>